All right, we're on the draft. All righty, we are back. Let's get into this draft with the 32nd IS Blue Knights versus the Joint Team Maritime Vanguard. I'm excited for this game because both teams have been pretty strong so far. Uh, I can I can uh, I can tell you why uh, JT Maritime has been pretty strong. It's because um, that's my team. Oh, I, you know what? That's a sound <laughs> argument right there. Can't fight that one. Can't fight that one. Uh, but no, 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 no. So uh, I'm excited for this game because it, it was last week we watched the Blue Knights up against the Ducks, and that game was absolutely fantastic to watch um and i do believe these two teams have a very similar comp uh set up the way they like to play the game play objectives and you know just play through their lanes so it, it is, it'll be a really nice uh heated back and forth uh, game i do believe draven Indeed. they're gonna ban out draven come on let spooky play draven they got to ban out Draven. Spooky's Draven is disgusting. I've seen him play it. I know. <laughs> Just like I've seen Kukies play it. Like, it's gross. It is so gross. Ugh. Draven ban is definitely warranted. Now, I'm very interested to see, uh, uh, once again, a Diana ban. I, I talked about this in the first couple of games of the season. Diana's strong. There's broken. no world where Diana is behind. It's just either she's ahead more. Or a head less? Slightly ahead or very far ahead? Yes. Like, like even if even if you're like, oh, Dan is like, oh, and so. Oh, God. I you can cut out. Can't. Another Nocturne pick. Let's go. Was there a Nocturne in game one? Nocturne is, yeah, uh, Nocturne in game two, but not in game one. Nocturne is wildly effective this season due to There's some no item changes. Way that Nocturne's up. Pick band champion. What? He's he's huge right now. Oh wow! I do like the jacks. I've been watching Druid put some reps in onto the jacks, and let me tell you, from I yeah. So I've been watching him put some reps in on the jacks, and it is very very good. Kuki going to be locking in that Akali. We watched him last week on it, and it was gross. <laughs> oh, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm looking at the lineup. For tonight, and I want to direct everyone's attention to the thirty-second real quick. Okay. Yubi is not in the top lane. No. No, he is not. He is not in the top lane. It is. I do. Rise in the top lane. Yubi Ooh, I love this Lissandra pick. Oh, it is such a great counter to the Akali. And to the Jacks, and plus it provides a lot of objective control. Oh, such a great pick from the Blue Knights. Fantastic pick. The lockdown from the Lissandra W is crazy. And then on top of that, you stack the ult, and Akali can't go anywhere. Oh, please don't do that. You do not. Oh, I do not like a Zaya pick on a B3. Uh, just because you can ban out the Rakan, and then Zaya basically becomes useless. Well, not yeah. necessarily. Not necessarily. Well, on this on this patch, I feel like if she does not have Rakan, she's not able to do as much as she like could have done last season. Yes, but we could see um, some picks from either uh, somebody picking up uh, Tom Kench, you know, on Mencham, right? Or uh, Nami. Nami could be a pretty good pick into this. But... I... Yeah. Seeing the Janna, I wouldn't want to take Kenshin to that, or even the Rakan for that matter. I feel like Janna was a really good blind right there, just because it does provide a lot of space um, in the bot lane specifically because of the Nocturne and the Lissandra, but it also dissuades you from picking like the Kench or the Rakan. I do yeah. like the Janna pick. I really do like the Janna pick. I do, I do like the Janna pick. It is definitely interesting. I also just enjoy seeing Janna be picked. Simply because I, she's not like a flashy champ, but she gets a lot of stuff done in lane. I love this Boris ban. Gonna ban out the Alawi. Alawi is such a really good champ right now, too. Oh my gosh, we are targeting. We are targeting uh, Spooky in this second uh, second round. 
I don't know why they banned out the Alawi, seeing how Jax was picked. And Jax Jungle hasn't been seen in it's many, a safe. Like many a year. Many a I, think, I, I think it is a safe ban. Just because you could take that champion mid lane or top lane. I do like the Shen. Oh, what? Wait a minute. It is Jax Jungle. <gasps> or we could have Jax. River Shen. Shen or Jungle. River oh, Shen. man. Ooh, River oh. Shen. Ah, oh, I remember watching. I, to be River Shen. I remember watching LCK season two eleven, uh, and I saw River Shen for the first time. I was like, "Yo, this is so cool." <laughs> if it was they crazy about River Shen, right? Like you get him a bunch of movement speed on him. Oh, the Maokai. Oh, that is. Oh, I like the way the Blue Knights' team is shaping up. If if Vanguard yeah. was planning on the Shen top, the Lowey ban is pretty good. Honestly, I would want to take I would want to take a Aatrox or Cassante here. Personally. I wouldn't take Cassante into this. I wouldn't take Cassante into this. Not not as a blind pick. They're gonna take well, the Zach though. A Zach top lane. Okay. Oh, you mean into the Shen. My bad. I thought you were saying the Shen and switch out. That is all oh, all. Oh. I love that pick. Is that is a real gross, that is a that is a fabulous R five right there. Um, I'm not a fan of this. And they you need... don't like the Bane? I think it's a great pick. They they need to keep Vayne alive from the Nocturne, Lissandra, and possibly Zach engaging all at the same time. But as long as Vayne can stay alive, Vayne's gonna destroy some people. Exactly. So this is gonna be pretty interesting. Who are they? Uh, let's who are they? And... And and Janna's a great support to keep the vein alive from that engage as well. That like they they Maritime Vanguard drafted very well, in my opinion. Oh yes. 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 Very well. But uh let's go into predictions real quick. We'll start uh, with uh, you hyper. Yeah. We'll ooh, ooh, I so I'm gonna say this from a not biased point of view. Um I do believe Maritime have the utilities in each of the champions kits to pull out a victory um they have really good early game uh lane pressure uh and objective control but their mid game kind of a little bit hit or miss but their late game potential tankiness and just absolute damage coming from both shen and Jax, and then akali's burst potential veins 1v9 potential and then jana just being able to keep her team safe and also, the tornadoes are annoying. Uh, I'm going to give it to Maritime. I think that Blue Knights have the easier comp to execute, but I also am going to give it to Maritime because I want to see Vayne explode in this game. I want to see a fed Vayne just delete everybody with Silver Bolts, getting kept alive by both Janna and Shen. All right, uh, I'm leaning towards the Vanguard with the Jax and the, Sh the Shen as well. Very strong. Okay, okay, Talo, not from bias. I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the Twitch chat. So Talo thinks I'm, it's coming from a place of bias. I absolutely 100% no bias. JT Maritime drafted a fourth threat cop. Do you guys know what that is? A fourth what? A fourth threat cop. A fourth threat comp, yes. Yeah, they drafted a fourth threat comp. Like, that is why I love it so much. And not only is it a fourth threat comp, but each champion provides such utility to team fights and just the overall state that it like they're they're not competing for the spotlight. Like they all kind of mash together to control each of the objectives. Uh, but also if one is falling behind, then the other ones will pick up the slack kind of a thing. And it's, you can't stop all of them. If, if you throw all of your, you, uh, all of your tools at like the Akali, Hey, everyone says we're going to stop Akali. Then Spooky's like, nah, I'm on Vayne. I destroy you guys. Or they're like, okay, let's split the diff Akali and Vayne. And then drew it on the Jax. I assume. Hold on. Let's check. Uh, no, it's going to be Azazel on the Jax. Uh, so Jackson the jungle. So even even better, Jackson the jungle. He's gonna be like, all right, cool. Now I'm the threat. But you can't stop them all. That's why I love their cop so much. Excellent, excellent. All right. So uh, 
instead of going on a break immediately as we prepare the game, we're going to briefly describe League of Legends for those of you who are new to this world. Uh, we're going to start with uh, top lane uh, and work our way down and then talk about objectives. So I'll start us off with top lane, right? So top lane's whole gimmick is to be either a tank, a fighter, or just someone who can really go on their own, kind of farm, not worry about the jungler coming up, um, and be where they need to be for objectives, right? Uh, basically, when it comes to team fighting, uh, the top laner can change, either make or break the game, right? Depending on how their lane went. Um, they're, destined, they're designed to be more of a solo, like, like self-sufficient person, uh, so you're not going to see a lot of like support coming their way. Uh, then with jungle, right? The jungle's whole job is to be everywhere, uh, to know where the objectives are, to take like dragon, grubs, um, or uh, uh, take yeah, yeah, game three of three. Thank you, Sejuani's flail. Uh, but uh, to take like grubs, uh, baron, um, uh, rift herald, right? And these are all objectives on the at the top side of the map. All the objectives there kind of change the gameplay, right? And in the bottom half of the map, that's where Dragon is. Dragon gives unique buffs depending on which Dragon is there. And the third Dragon of each game will be the Dragon that will become the soul. So generally, it would be the third and fourth would uh, spawn as the same Dragon, potentially the fifth, depending on who takes it. And then after soul has been got, the last Dragon that will spawn is going to be Elder Dragon, which gives kind of an execute. Uh, and then... Uh, Jungle also has like a red and blue buff. Red gives damage and um, uh, healing over time, and blue buff gives cooldowns and mana um, generation. And then we're going to move on to Coach Matt with mid lane. Sure. So mid lane is a whatever fits position where you could be pushing your lane to take turret damage for your side. Uh, you could be playing passive and trying to react to what the other mid laner is doing but always you're looking at what's happening on the map objective wise and if you need to leave your lane to help your team with that objective because mid lane is at the center and is cl effectively closest to every objective as well as being equally close to both of the other lanes mid is constantly having to manage if they do or do not leave their lane and that depends on the champions being played. That depends on how well they're doing. Um, and mid's entire role is essentially to be wherever their team needs them to be to make the most impact. And mids also generally are very powerful alone, but are consistently fighting with the jungler and one of their lanes. Uh, and we'll go to the bot side. So the bot side, uh, probably the most important role in the game. That is from a place of bias. I am an ADC main. So your bot, your bot lane consists of two, uh, two players. Uh, that is your ADC or your APC, depending if you're going to go attack damage or, or uh, ability power damage. And then you have your support. So your ADC's whole goal in the game is to get gold, get items, deal all the damage so your entire job is to dps you are there as the carry that is who you're supposed to be you're supposed to be carrying team fights uh making sure you win in these objective fights these big team fights uh, your go your biggest goal is to not die so uh one of the one of my first coaches told me that if I wanted to play adc I have to get comfortable in living in a horror game because that's what it is everyone is out to get you uh, champions like Nocturne or Kali Jax, this is their entire role. Get to the ADC and make their life miserable. And your support's uh, goal is to provide vision. So you are lighting up the map like a Christmas tree. You are keeping your ADC safe in lane. And then once your laning phase is over, around like the 10, 15 minute mark, depending on how well your team is doing in the game, then they start to rotate around the map to your other members throughout the jungle trying to provide vision providing support and then i mean that's that's uh that's the bot lane in a nutshell uh, did i do good that was that was good that was perfect and okay. so uh um 
we're going to try to do this a little bit more as the season goes on to explain a little bit more of the nuances of the game. We can't do all of it in between each break because we'd be here forever. So right now we're going to take a short break as we set up uh, the next um, part of the, the game. So very short break, bathroom break, food break, whatever you want. But we'll be back here within like a minute or two. So don't go anywhere too far. All right, we are Welcome back after that very day. short break. I told you we weren't going to be gone long. Uh, as we are setting up for this wonderful, beautiful game. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 32nd in the JT Maritime Vanguard. Some interesting play happening right now. All right, good. Yeah, it's that, it's that, it's that, uh, it's that Raptor Ward. I love that Raptor Ward. If light travels so fast. Go, go ahead there. Uh, <laughs> Logan, I kind of cut you off. I thought we were going to go for an invade. <laughs> I thought so too. I was expecting it. I was like, "Oh man, it's about to get it's about to get juicy." Uh, what are you doing there, Lasagna? The not... <laughs> not a whole lot happening from either team, but Gerb's taking a That's... little bit of damage. It's the, it's the vision dance. It's the vision dance. They're trying to step up to get a little bit of vision, but it looks like Greaves is starting to make his way over as well. But as Hazel's channeling that stun, they land the stun on Eternal Cries. And a really good uh, Q damage coming in. Really good damage from Druid as well. The exhaust coming down from IO. Eternal Christ is just trying to get away. Force the flash, but really good on that. Popping his passive, that cell division. And Druid, first blood, JT Maritime on the board. That is doubly Dude. huge because as Zach, part of the draw of having a Zach jungle is that you get your passive to reset your life. On a oh, on a turret dive or something, so Eternal Christ that, does not have that now. Well, that's that's Zach top, so he doesn't even have it for the trades anymore. Can we talk about what Azazel just did, please? Did Azazel steal? Yeah, he stole blue buff. Oh, that's uh, gonna be huge. That's gonna be if if we don't see a vertical jungle from Greaves. To recognize that, that's going to be a problem, and they have no vision Ooh. on Blue Knights to to recognize that that happened. Yeah, I don't... Th I mean, I think the only way they saw it was when Druid was making his way back over to his side of the camp, but I hope he's going to get jumped on, almost rooted up there by that Feather callback, forced to flash away. Druid and Eternal Cries are just duking it out right now. I love the when top laners do this. Absolutely love it. You know, Shadow's going to do a lot against this uh, Zach with his max health damage. We're about to see Greaves get sad. Yeah, he's about to walk in his blue side and realize it ain't there no more. Oh no, he checks, he sees it's gone, and he knows he just got three buffed. <laughs> or in yep. other words, Azaziel took three out of the four buffs at the start of the game, which is not where you want to be as Greaves. And as I mentioned, not where you want to be as a right? jungler. Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned earlier, right? Blue buff gives you mana cooldowns. So the fact that Jax was not able to, not only able to take his, but also take his own. Yeah. Ooh. Azaziel's it's... playing a very smart game right now. I mean, it, he has to. He has to put Nocturne behind as much as possible. Uh, for you, for those sitting in the chat that don't know, Nocturne wants to farm up so that he can get that level 6 ultimate so that he can start making these ganks a whole lot easier. But Greaves is going to go in onto just Kuki. That Shroud giving him a little bit of extra space, trying to find the kill, and he does. Drops the Ignite. It's going to be a one-for-one, one, and Nocturne does not get a piece of that. Kuki took a good one for one there. Yeah, he did. Looks like the junglers met in the river right there. Who ended up getting the scuttle? It was Azazel. You know, that one for one in the mid lane between Kuki and Gerbs, I don't think that was a smart trade for Akali right there. It no, was. it was. It, it was the best trade because she was dead regardless, and it's better to give all of that gold over to the mid laner, then share it with the jungler. Well, she also saying, like going under the tower, right? Um, because evening it out, that's one thing. But look at the the minion score. She, oh yeah, yes, yes. she, she, did, she is, did lose a lot. Well, she didn't lose a lot because of that one for one though. The wave was actually crashing into Blue Knight's side w with the one for one, which is the best time to take a one for one when you're crashing into the other 
player's tower. She just happens to be behind on CS because she's a melee champion playing against a crowd control heavy range champion and early yeah. game for Akali is very tough in that matchup. So this is totally normal. I do gotta say, Spooky is farming very well and a flash in the root to come through. Spooky T knocked back, has to throw that ghost down, uses that tumble. Unfortunately, Iopis caught there on the south side of the river and he is just gonna take one for the team, let his ADC get out of there and that is one over into Yubi's pocket. I gotta say, I've never seen Yubi in the bot lane, so I'm very curious to see him as an ADC. I wonder if he's just as nutty. Oh, really good damage coming from Druid onto Eternal Cries. Unfortunately, he does have a level advantage on Druid at the moment, but he is fighting really heavy in that minion way, taking a lot of damage. Druid had a Most great of dodge damage. of Eternal Cries Q as well. Most of that damage came from the uh, Druid's uh, Q right there, right? Shen does max health damage. That's a lot of damage. To Ooh, be done. threads the needle. Absolutely threaded the needle. Uh, and JT Maritime did get all of Ooh. those minions. Unfortunately, Zaysel is going to get feared up top lane. They are duking it out as well, but Kuki is going to dive in. And so is Lissandra flashes in, trying to get the root, but the stun is still going to go through. They're looking for the jungler. Now they're going to turn their attention over to the mid laner. The mid laner is forced to flash away, but that shuriken is still attached to Gerbs. Unfortunately, that fear is going to go down. Shroud comes out just in the nick of time. No extra damage is going to go through. JT Maritime lived to see another day. Oh. And Eternal Cries! I love to see it! You know, that's the biggest risk right there with that uh, Shen Taunt Q, right? You think you're going to get it, you miss it by just a little bit, and Zach heals from all of his abilities, essentially, if he grabs one of his uh, ghouls. The juggler is here. He's two levels down. I would not want to be taking this fight. He does land the stun, fighting really heavy in the minion wave. Half of his health almost annihilated. Oh, we have a TP from the Shen there in the mid lane. Okay, I like it. Kuki lives. Smart Kuki retreat lives. from Greaves. A lot of players would have committed to that and, and died as soon as Shen landed. Smart Ooh. retreat. Spooky, unfortunately, is going to go down in the bot lane. Yubi found a really nice follow-up that Figgy provided with that root. And there is that flash taunt that I was waiting for. Gerbs does land the root onto Druid, so unable to get that kill. Uh, Logan, Matt, let me ask you guys something. All right, what's up? Hit These two teams are very aggressive right now. Yes. Totally different from last game because it is a back and forth aggression rather than a one sided aggression. Yes. Uh, so I mean it's kinda it's kinda hard to figure out who's kind of in the driver's seat. The goal difference isn't that uh too far apart, maybe uh, about a one K difference in favor of uh the blue knights. So who do you guys think right now is uh ahead? It's really tough to tell, right? The Blue Knights may have two kills over, um, you know, the joint team Maritime Vanguard, right? But really nice Maritime taunt. Vanguard's making some good plays right here. Ooh, really good taunt. Ooh, Eternal Cries does a really good return damage, too. I like how Druid's fighting next to his turret. I absolutely love that. But uh, they're looking for a dive. You guys see it? Yeah, there's the dive. Nocturne Ultimate is going to get called down. Shen is going to be in a lot of trouble. Tries to use his ability to block some of that damage, but Eternal Cry is going to send him right to the fountain. Did that was we a have, really good play. Did we have uh, Zach passive on Eternal Cries for that gank? Yes, we did. Interesting. I, I was, was I was just surprised to not see the engage come from Eternal Cries, but I guess he was so low. That may have caused that to fail. Yeah, I think that was the smart move to go in with the Nocturne, right? Because then at least he could walk away with a spell shield. Whereas Eternal, if he dies on the tower, that's it. Ooh, and it looks like JT make first move onto the Drake right here. It is now at 800 health, nicely secured by the jungler. Nicely secured. Are we not going to clear that ward, guys? Yeah. Oh, wait, <laughs> Yeah, Never right. mind. 
Never mind. So earlier, I did mention the jungler. I left out one key important thing. The junglers have a specific uh, ability that is only unique to them called Smite. And that uh, ability levels up depending on how well they have farmed their jungle. Uh, we'll I do like that aspect of it, by the way. I do like that change of Smite last season. Uh, like, it does more damage based on how well you farm. Continue. Yes. Oh, well, yeah, I was going into just like, for example, right now we see uh, on the items, right? We have the Jax uh, with uh, Azazel having Ooh, this is a good 17. Knock up. I mean, they're uh, trying to get over is. there, but he's going to get slowed up. Really nice exhaust, and the fl and the stun is going to get timed out, and the heroic leap to fly on this Figgy. Figgy's going to get knocked up. They're trying to get the kill over to Spooky. They do find it, but Yubi with the double kill. That man is insane. We have Gerbs now here on to the TP, but here comes the Shen ultimate on to Io. He finds a double man stun. Yubi forced to pop that cleanse. Now he's running down Druid, looking for maybe a three-piece, but a really good damage and a shutdown going over to the top laner. Did Io uh, just not? Oh yeah, I guess he just they just didn't ult until it was don't. too late. Yeah, unfortunately, Kyuki trying to get into the face of Gerbs. He uses that shuriken to get back to his shroud. It's a one one. They both drop ignite on each other. That's crazy. These one for ones between each other are absolutely crazy right now. And then on top of that, I would not have gone. Ooh, nice in stun in, under the turret. Oh, really good damage from Azazel. Pops that ultimate to try to do a little bit more damage, but he's going to get stunned up, and the bouncing blob of death reigns again. That Zack, uh, you know, the, the double-edged sword that is Zack is incredible. Ooh, almost got it. Azazel thought that he had it, and Eternal Cries just said, hey, tanks were overpowered. Sorry, bro. Hey, hey I, I, know, I know you think you got it, but unfortunately you don't got it. Ooh, you know, finds the taunt really the good. Kuki trying to get in there. Uses that shroud to close the distance a little bit, but we have a TP coming out from Eternal Cries and a really great execute coming out from Kuki. Now there's a 1v2. Druid finds a little bit of extra shielding going to look for the top. Here comes a jungler from the side of JT Maritime. The Shuriken's going to land, and he is not going to get out of there. The Cell Division will not save you today. Goodbye, small Zach Blobs. I was a little nervous. Goodbye, small Zach. This is... This is pretty interesting, because when you teleport, right, you can't go back on it. You have to commit, <laughs> and it's one of the... It's I a, like again, that. ...another double-edged sword in this game. Uh, go Continue, continue. I just, I like the way you said that for some reason. It, like, made me laugh. <laughs> no, no, that's good. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think in both, actually, this game and the previous game, we've seen a TV where they were going in and were like, don't worry, guys, I'm on my way. And their team dies, and he's like, well... I'm here now. I, I guess I'm on my in. way. What's up? You know? Kyuki trying to find some damage down. down. Yeah, oh. that was really, really good CC from the side of the Blue Knights. Honestly, Nocturne just went in to be like, hey, I'm also here, by the way, in case you thought you would have survived this. Nah, I exist in this game. So you said you usually don't see Yubi down in the bot lane? No. I don't think I've ever seen Yubi down in the bot lane. This is very interesting. So his Zaya is pretty cracked. He knows how to pilot this champion. And I'm going to... Oh, well, the TP does not go through that. You hate to see that. You hate to see that. Uh, if they decide to fight, I'm going to talk about the fight. And then I'll talk about how good he is on that champion. Really nice. Featherstorm finds the route to chain CC to follow up. The ultimate from Iop only saving Spooky T's life. He's going to pop that ultimate as well but he is not gonna be able to get out of one flashes through he's still invisible yubi tried to find the feathers on that one wasn't able to get it and spooky t might be able to escape through the jungle right there but here comes just kuki finds the shutdown onto the adc my direct the camera was in the top lane i am so sorry that's a large shutdown and guess what spooky t is out that's my he adc lives. right there that's my adc right there that was Mm. Spooky T Stop. just barely, barely, barely made it and got the whole recall off and is actually safe. Do, do they what? get? Do you see that Shelly is being taken by Blue Team? Now, is it Shelly or is it Shirley? Because there's only one Herald. 
It, there's only one. The Shelley. second one was was Shirley, right? So there's it's got to be Shelley. Yeah. Okay. So Shelley, and if you got lucky enough to get the second one, it was Shirley. But because things have changed, it's only one Shelley. I like it. I like it. Do we what? think there's going to be a name for all six Grubs? No. I, I don't know about the Grubs. <laughs> Separately I named. Not. Absolutely have, like, not. We have unofficial uh, tournament names for Baron. We have. Hall we have the hall monitor. No, right? hall monitor, that's right. The hall monitor, yep. Oh, nice top. I, I wonder which Baron we're going to get, because last two games we got the exact same Baron. Was Baron. it just a normal Baron? Yes. All right, then. Man, Druid's starting to do really good damage to Eternal Cries now. With his Cell Division not up anymore, uh, it is going to be really hard for him to survive this one. He tries to jump in there. He does get a little bit of damage. Bouncing Blob of Death. Uh, went over to the mid lane. I'm going to jump right over back to the top lane. We do have Nocturne Ultimate getting channeled, but it is getting channeled there in the mid lane. But guess what? Who, uh, oh, QQ boy. doesn't survive that one. Oh, what a, what a risky play. We're going to have to see Druid get some type of anti-heal to deal with all the healing that Eternal Cries is doing. Uh, he did a really good job right there standing in the pocket, almost winning that one. If it wasn't for... Zach's ultimate. Uh, I think he wins that. What level item choice by Term Christ, by the way? Going with the Dark Seal. Who went with the Dark Seal? Term Christ on Zach. Oh. oh, yeah, he did. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's a bold move. Ooh, Druid able to lock Eternal Cries up there, taking a tower shot. Taunt almost up right now. Uh, give it one more second. Does have it now. Looking to find it, but they're going to try to give oh. it over to Spooky T. Eternal Cries is going to flash in the opposite direction, but they get a really... Oh, with that third mm -hmm. silver bullet, Spooky T puts himself on the was, board. Very well done. It was a bit of a greedy condemn from Spooky T to, to I 100%. think, try to get an execute with it. And it, it made it so Spooky had to burn ult, which is not ideal, but good kill. Ooh, Kuki diving in onto Yubi and Fig, and really big ultimates coming out from both bot laners for the side of the Blue Knights. And now here comes Nocturne. Here to ruin Juicy's day. You know, I do gotta say, Greaves, uh, Greaves has been doing a really great job on this Nocturne. And it's so terrifying. Is, Azazel has uh, tried to keep uh, Greaves behind. Oh, flashes over, over the wall. wall. Oh my gosh. And now it's a complete 180. This is oh, slowly man. turning very, very heavily into the favor yeah. of Blue Knights. It is. It absolutely is. Um, I mean, but that's that that's that mid game that I was talking about at the beginning of the draft. Like their mid game isn't the best. It's very hit or miss. But their late game, if they can survive to, I'd say, twenty five minutes, um, and not be terribly behind, they have an absolute shot of winning this game. Excellent you know, cancel. Exactly. Eternal cries cancels the ult from Druid Shen with the crowd control, and unfortunately, Druid goes down. I do. I desperately want to see this make it to 25 plus minutes. I'd love to see Spooky absolutely go insane on Vayne with Ghost. I mean, he's uh, I not halfway. I'd say about a third way finish with Rage Blade. So when he picks up Rage Blade, that's going to be a huge item spike for him, and these team fights will start to look a whole lot different. Indeed, indeed. But. So back to my point on Yubi on the Zaya, the reason I know he is really good on this chat is because there's a there's a specific uh, way you can pull your feathers back as you throw Q and still get the root as they're coming back. Uh, but we're going to have a, an engage right here on a spooky T. Really good nature's grasp, but he's forced to pop that ultimate, starting to look for another follow up the counter engage here coming in just kooky flashing forward jumping onto biggie sam's biggie goes down but here comes greaves into the back line a double kill going over to just kooky he is insane now spooky t's laying on the damage shut down going right over to zazel they do find the kill onto the adc now it is the jungler the top laner looking for a little bit more the jungler finds eternal prize he is going to go into cell division druid now jumping on to the mid laner will the top laner be able to get back out he does channels that Jump and Azazel gets stuck under turret. Eternal cries, making Azale 
eternally crying as he looks at the great screen. Azazel with a, a preemptive jack stun that ultimately hit one blob and multiple canceled auto attacks without resets. Just not barely making it on killing eternal cries. I would tell that you, that fight was really, really close. I'll tell you right now, the, one of the saddest things is auto canceling yourself on a champion that relies on auto. Who did you I see auto cancel? Jax was either yeah. auto canceling or missing resets. I Ooh. I don't remember which, but Jax denied himself some damage and then had a a, a stun that only hit one blob as well. I have definitely auto canceled playing Ash more than once, and it feels bad. I've done it on Aatrox, who relies on that to get his Q. Oh, just Qki looking for a little cheeky bush play. Does find the Shuriken onto Gerbs. Gets really good amount of damage and finds the ultimate for the kill. And here comes Io for the shielding. That Shroud not able to get him out of there. And Greaves, like the jungler he is, smites him from the heavens. Druid comes in from that ultimate. But here comes Yubi from the north side of that river falling. Swiftly in hand by Figgy, uses that nature's grass, locks down the top laner, and Iope is in running for his life. Spooky T is also here. Eternal Christ channeling that jump, able to land onto Spooky T, but he's going to get condemned right into the wall, and that damage that Vayne does onto tanks is just gnarly. Oh, he's going to go. Okay, he's not going to go for it. Thank, thank you. I thought, he was gonna go, I thought he was gonna dive right back on in there. We've got another dragon take by Blue Knights further building that objective mid-game lead. They're really right. looking to capitalize on their comp and, and not let the game get oh, to the point where Spooky pick, gets to go pick off. Yubi off. Pick him off. Oh, he's gonna get rooted up, potentially knocked back. Figgy is in the face now. The condemn doesn't get condemned into the wall, but that ultimate from Spooky T does go up, and Yubi has the damage. Enough damage to dissuade him from going any further. Almost got um, a QQ. We're seeing some shaking coming from the camera. Do you want to reset the director camera? Sure. Yeah, that is kind of weird. It's weird because someone's holding the camera. <laughs> yeah. That is, that is that was odd. All right, might have fixed. All right, yeah. Was scared. It was like, what is happening in this game? Okay, okay, yeah, we fixed it. Awesome. That was weird. That was weird to see. It be, All right. It could be a problem on Riot's side. This Can you zoom bad. out a little bit, it Matt? doesn't work. Control Shift Z. Yeah, it doesn't work. I can zoom in, but not out. Not That's further. Weird. Okay, okay, work. Try again. Oh my god. Oh, there we Ooh, go. Yubi! Okay. Really, really yeah. nice reaction time from Yubi with that Feather Storm to get out of uh, the clutches of Kyuki. I have never done Control Shift Z. This has changed my mind. You're welcome. My, my keyboard was off because my cat was hitting buttons earlier. That's why it didn't Control, work. <laughs> Control Shift Z mouse pad. So, uh, so now that we are entering this uh, mid to late game stage, we're we're at that we're about that at the twenty five minute mark. I love this tournament zoom. I love this. Ooh, really good, really good engage from Druid right there. But unfortunately, Greaves is here for the support. It's not going to be a one v two. He does lay down that line. Does get the jump off the fear. The taunt does not get him out in time. Azazel is trying to get over to his top laner, but does not get there in time. Greaves slays the Druid. Druid did have the good item buy of the Thorn Mail for Grievous Wounds, but unfortunately getting cleaned up top lane. Yep. I gotta say, Greaves has been doing fantastic in the jump. Oh, yeah. Even, even the games where they have Oh, the stun, but the jump still goes off. I don't like that buffer. He's going to get slowed up from Smite. Tries to flash over the wall. Does not work. Io doing a, what the ports do. Really nice condemn it to the wall. And the top laner is going to fall. Hand that over to the jungler. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Kyuki doing what Kyuki does and 1v1ing his lane opponents. What? The Blue Knights walk away with a Baron from that. I don't think that's worth on the side of the Vanguard.
Your most important split pushers are down. I call that worth. Oh, they do find an engage there in the mid lane, though. Here comes Druid with that Shen ultimate. Does find a teep, uh, does find a taunt on two figs right there, but Yubi with a, an insane other callback finds a double kill. Looking for a triple. He does get that. Now he's got his eyes set for that quad. A nice flash coming out from Spooky T. He tries to condemn him away, but that fear is still going to go off. And now Greaves is sticking to the ADC. The ADC does pop that ultimate, tries to get out of there. His health bar getting dangerously low, and he does survive. Kyuki, meanwhile, gets an objective bounty. First turn of the game for them. But at what cost? Ooh, Eternal uh, Cry's going in. Yeah, he is going to go in. A TP coming out from Lissandra there in the bot lane. Interesting TP. Not going to have that. He uses his ultimate to try to create some space. And meanwhile, the rest of his team taking that inhibitor turret there in the mid lane. Man, QQ is just stalling so much time. They are wasting so much time right now. Oh, and I absolutely right love it. A really nice Shuriken uses that to create a little bit more space. Tries to dive right there into the tower. Uses his flash. He is just taking him around the map. It is a merry-go-round. The rest of his team has spawned. They are now in the south side of the river. Here comes Nocturne Ultimate and Zack from over the top of the wall. But here's Druid. He's going to face check that... Malphite and has to flash and taunt his way back into his team. Wow. Kyuki played Ring Around the Rosie. What Wild was that? Happening right now. What was that? That was awesome. Oh, drags him into the rest of his team. I really like that play. Nature's Grass is going to hit two members. Druid is going to fall. Unfortunately, IO forced to flash away. And it looks like the jungler is trying to duke out. Eternal cries right there. Uh, but he's just going to jump away to safety as well. Drake on the map. It is an Ocean Soul. For those of you who do not know, when you claim Ocean Soul, you gain uh, health regen when out of combat. It is... Oh, oh, okay. But yeah. <sighs> it's another that, dragon dude. for Blue Knights. They got Soul They're, Point now. They are on Soul Point. So, I ask, uh, you all's opinion real quick, since we are talking about dragons. Which dragon and soul do you think has the most effect on Either Infernal or Chemtech, mm. in my opinion. In this, in this, On this patch, I would say it's Hextech. Oh, that one, cloud. Hextech. I would say Hextech or Cloud. I lean more towards Ocean and um, one of the techs. It doesn't matter which one. <laughs> Any of them. I, I, I mean, say specifically. Really strong. I say specifically Cloud Soul. Oh, really nice condemn to the wall. Eternal Cries might just fall. Get picked off right here. Get slowed up by IO, but he has to use the Let's Bounce. And that Cell Division is going to go up. The rest of his team is here to try to provide a little bit of support, but he will not. He will be able to live this. Here comes Spooky T. He does find him, but that Feather Storm was just too good. Here comes Grace from over the top of the wall, and here comes the Feather Storm now. He has so many feathers laid out. He finds the root. He finds the kill, but the support is going to be able to pick that up. Really nice ultimate from IO to try to create a little bit of space for Druid. Unfortunately, He's still gonna get feared up, rooted up, CC'd up. Greaves, you are a madman. Druid a rampage. Druid Shen ulted IOP6 instead of Spooky T. Spooky needed it. Uh, oh I God. I don't I know if Kiki I don't know if Kiki has it in the pocket to stop this game any further. He does find the Shuriken out of the mid laner. Really good Tornado. Just buy a little bit of extra time. That used that Shroud very nicely and does find a kill onto the support. Now he's looking for a little bit more. Looks for the mid laner. He does not hit that Shuriken for that one, but he's going to walk up, hit those ones. That Q does land. Spooky T is now here. He does not find the damage. Yubi is just too good. A double kill. He is unstoppable. He is 12 and 4. He is the ADC. All right. Yeah, you know what? Yubi is busted wherever he is at this point. I asked myself before the game start, how do you stop Spooky T? The answer to this question, you stick Yubi in front of him. Because <laughs> he has shut Spooky down all game.
Yeah, Yubi has a massive, massive lead right now on Spooky, and Spooky has tried to go toe to toe a couple times, and Yubi is just so far ahead, you can't do it. What is Spooky building? I don't recognize those components together. I believe Spooky is going. Is that that uh, um, that bow and arrow one that like has the day and night feature? Yeah, it I believe could be, is. but why? Because that Van doesn't do any. Vane doesn't need that. Vane goes on hit. Yeah, but the day and uh, night one is the hybrid pen, right? It gives magic well, and armor pen. Well, 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 the, um, I guess the true damage, I don't know. Because she just does true damage, and she does zero true magic, magic damage. Vane, Vane does zero magic damage. There'd be no reason for her to buy. But when you have Gensu's, I guess. And also. Oh, it does do a little from key? that. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. But what I gotta, I do gotta give it to them. They are doing the correct move right here. Not bothering with contesting Baron. Try to push these waves out. Uh, keep mid lane under control so that you can contest this next Drake because that is soul point. And then just farm up. Oh, shit, it's a fun move. But uh, you, it's so hard to keep waves pushed when you have Zaya on the other side. It is so hard. <sighs> All right, Matt, you're, you're JT Maritime. You're in the calls. You're in the comms. What are you telling your team? JT Maritime needs to get Vayne more items. They, 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 just, they have to get, get Spooky T slightly caught up with UB, and I think they just need to delay this game and keep it Ooh. safe. Oh, they're going to try to look for a pick here onto Kyuki. Uses that shuriken very nicely to get over the top of the wall, but into the face of the other team. Really nice flash. Shen Ultimate does not finish channeling through one more second, and he would have appeared out of nowhere. But Spooky T and Azazel are here. The Zack, the Vayne, the Condemn, the Tornado. But Yubi is just too good. He is legendary. He is unstoppable. He's got a double kill, and his jungler is in pursuit. This just might be game. That back is being channeled from Druid right now. He's back in his fountain. And can him and his support stop this game from ending right here? They are now starting to hit that Nexus, but Druid is just going to get bounced around. CC down, sent back to the Rift. It is the gray screen. It is the victory screen if you are the 32nd Blue Knights. The engage from Blue Knights was so strong there that essentially Yubi just got to do free damage for a while and everybody died. <laughs> <sighs> all right, all right, guys. Who are we gonna bring in for this interview? There's so much that happened. Who are we gonna bring you in? either it's gotta be UB or Greaves. I Greaves or UB. Greaves or UB. I'm a laning tool. We, we you know what we pulled UB in last time. Let's get Greaves in here. Okay. Uh. <laughs> all right, Greaves. Yo. Welcome, welcome, the, welcome. Welcome to the booth. Uh, you were selected for the interview here, man. Hype. It was a hype game. That was 100% hype. hype. All right, so let us know. Let us know. Um, how was... Like, like towards... I don't even know where to begin, really, in the game. So just the Got to be getting game, a draft. Yeah, yeah. We were just debating the taking game. the Akali round know. one. For uh, for our boy Gerbs here, okay, I mean, he's been one to one to pull it out because we got a lot of Akali players in in this league, but um, we decided to go with the Nocturne and play play off that. No, that was a that was a really good choice. Um, hey, I don't like Nocturne just because I'm an ADC, so you can understand. Oh, my I feel hate. that. Yeah, you can understand my hate for that champ, but I specifically want to talk about a the Lissandra pick and b that Zaya pick because. Although although Lissandra wasn't making the highlights, you can definitely see the impact the champion had in the game uh, just from the amount of CC and just the catch off. Like, oh no, I've been caught off guard because the claws, here's a Lissandra in my face, frozen too. Uh, yeah, we we knew no matter what champ we put UB on, he was going to do his, his thing and get damage. But um, we needed some way to, to neutralize that Akali and... Um, Gerbs was able to pull it out and 
Uh, he, he did his part in lane, and then she would roam and get four kills out of nowhere. So um, yeah. it, was, it was a little tough to deal with. But yeah, he, he, he did great pulling it out. Matt, what uh, you got? I'd love to know, macro-wise and, and comms-wise, how was your team planning decisions in that game as objectives came up and as things things swung back and forth a little bit in the early game like the first 10 15 minutes yeah so pretty we we play much play around nocturne are pretty much the whole time um i know the, the one dragon they got that first one um we were not in position so um we decided to call off that but pretty much anytime nocturne R was up and there was an objective we were we were trying to look for something and um we're all on the same page there, going in with the Nocturne R, the Zac slinging in, and the Maokai ult. Such a such a good wombo. Tiny yeah, follow up question: it. When when yeah. you caught when you caught Azazel in the river and got your fear on him or your uh, yeah your fear on him, spell shielded his stun, and proceeded to delete him. How did it feel? Oh, it's just easy, man. Nocturne's so busted right now. Uh, I don't know how people let this champ through, honestly. I can't uh, believe this champ's a pick ban right now. Yeah, it's it's just so busted with the I forget the name the name of the item, but his all these up so much. Plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 really strong right now. All right, yep. final question, final question, because we were talking about it at the beginning of the game. How did it feel walking into your jungle? Like, huh? There should be a blue buff here. Oh, I mean, it's fine. Uh, we we had no vision and off there level one, getting the the first blood on the Zac. Um, I kind of figured something would be gone. Um, so I'm kind of glad it was just the, the blue buff and not also Gromp. So it ended up not being too bad. Excellent, excellent. Well, congratulations. You guys walk away with a victory here. Um, looking at the standings right now, uh, we're sitting at a pretty even gate uh um roster except for the troll king sitting the 29th is sitting at five and oh and the viking sitting at oh and five the ducks um after this game um which we have you know factored in but i believe they will be sitting at as well but um with that being said any parting shots from everybody I'm good. GG. I'm good too. A bunch of fun games tonight. I can't wait for next week. Yeah, uh, fantastic games. Blue Knights are going to walk away with fantastic outcome. Um, any parting shots from you, uh, Greaves, before we walk away? No, nah, man. Fun game. Good weekend. And uh, see you guys next week. Awesome. Well,. We will see you all here next week, same place, not the same time. It'll be on Tuesday, not Fridays. But uh, we're going to be streaming the rest of the games for the season. Uh, tune in with us Tuesdays, Thursdays, or Fridays. It's going to be a great time. Watch out for that notification from your people. And we'll see you here next week.